How can we, as average retail investors, buy investment exposure to carbon offsets? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video, particularly options that we can buy in the stock market. It's worth noting that we're focusing on pure play investment options here, not companies that just produce carbon offsets on the side as a byproduct. These are companies entirely built around the carbon markets and offer exposure to the commodity itself. Now, there are three different business models that we can invest in. There are ETFs, royalty companies, and project developers. For the first set of equities, we have the ETFs. And these ETFs will offer exposure to the underlying futures contracts on either the compliance or voluntary carbon market carbon units. The first and largest of the possible ETF options is the Crane Shares Global Carbon ETF with the ticker KRBN. This ETF offers exposure to carbon allowances from the European Union, California, the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, and the United Kingdom. This ETF has the most diversification of everything on this list, with around 60% of the funds in European Union allowances, 30% in California's allowances, and 5% each in both RGGI and UK allowances. Next up is the Crane Shares European Carbon Allowance Strategy ETF with the ticker KEUA. And this ETF offers exposure to carbon allowance futures from the European Union exclusively. And in the same vein, the Crane Shares Californian Carbon Allowance ETF, ticker KCCA, offers exposure to carbon allowances in the Californian Emissions Trading Scheme. And this is the second largest ETF by market cap behind KRBN. The fourth entry on this list is a little different. This is the IPATH Series B Carbon ETN, and that's the ticker GRN, which as you can see from the title is actually an ETN and not an ETF. So this is an exchange traded note, so you should keep that in mind before investing in it. But it primarily offers exposure to European Union allowances, so that's always an option as well. Next up is the Spark Change Physical Carbon EUA ETC with the ticker CO2 in London. And this is one of the most unique investment options here because like many others on the list, it offers exposure to European allowances, but this is actually an exchange traded commodity fund, meaning every share that you buy is physically backed by carbon allowances. In contrast to other ETF options that use futures contracts. So Spark Change is going out and buying allowances outright, which could play a role in squeezing European allowance prices when the markets come back into favor. So that's a pretty interesting one. And lastly, for the ETFs, we have the Crane Shares Global Carbon Offset Strategy ETF, ticker KSET. In contrast to all the other options, this fund actually offers exposure to futures on offsets in the voluntary carbon markets, as opposed to the compliance carbon markets. This fund tracks nature-based and global emissions offsets traded through exchanges operated by the CME Group. So if you want direct ETF exposure to offsets rather than allowances, this is the only real option to do that currently. Now for the next group of stocks, we have carbon offset royalty companies. These companies provide an upfront cash investment to a carbon offset producing project in the voluntary carbon markets. And in exchange, they'll receive a certain percentage of the revenues or offsets that the project generates. So the first royalty company on the list is Base Carbon, ticker BCBN, with a market cap of around $52 million Canadian as of the recording of this video. Full disclosure, I am a shareholder of the company. This is the only stock I own out of any of the carbon-related stocks mentioned in the video. Now with that said, Base Carbon has two royalties on carbon projects right now, one in Rwanda and the other in Vietnam, both of them being cook stove projects where the project developers and at high efficiency cook stoves to rural communities in these regions. The company has several partnerships, for example, to bring more carbon expertise to the company, Base Carbon's been coordinating with Hardwick Climate Business Limited, a consulting firm that has ties in the industry as far back as 2005. So that gets Base Carbon exposure to a diverse potential pipeline of projects. And they also signed a letter of intent with the Danish Red Cross, so they're working in tandem to scope out blue carbon projects in Southeast Asia for at least 24 months as of November 2022. And finally, BASE also has connections to AVEX Technologies, which is a company I own as well, as they were a spin-out from AVEX. 
and Avex owns about 16% of base carbon right now. Their partnership will likely include access to Avex's ESG technology and connections in the industry. So that could prove to be quite valuable over time. Something to keep in mind is that Base Carbon is one of the only companies on this list that are actually generating revenues yet. As of the recording of this video in July 2023, Base recently announced carbon offset sales from their now validated Vietnam project, where Citigroup has agreed to be the off taker for the first 7.4 million offsets that are generated. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Most companies in the carbon space are new and likely micro caps, so investing in the sector right now will require a higher tolerance for risk, for sure. With that said, let's move on to the second royalty company, which is the largest market cap on the royalty list, and this would be Carbon Streaming, ticker NETZ. In Canada, the company trades for a market cap of around 62 million, and they have a diversified portfolio of royalties and streams across 22 different projects, including Red Plus, cook stoves, biochar, and more. Now, Carbon Streaming has an agreement with a Cisco Gold Royalties, who have the option to buy into any Carbon Stream that they develop. And thanks to the variety of royalties that Carbon Streaming has built up at this point, and a decent cash position, the company looks quite cheap on the surface. But I'll let you know that there are some pretty good reasons why the company's market cap has dropped around 90% from its peak at the end of 2021. And I'll link the videos I made on Carbon Streaming in the description that go over just that. But ultimately, it is up for you to research these companies and decide which may be interesting to you, of course. Next up is Star Royalties, ticker STRR, with a market cap of around 25 million Canadian. This company is interesting because they're the only one that primarily operates in first world jurisdictions like the US, Canada, and Australia. They're also diversified across precious metals and titanium sand royalties, along with carbon offsets. And most of those offsets will be generated by the regenerative agriculture project that they have across the Midwestern US, but there will be forestry and clean tech royalties as well. So if you want diversification across carbon offsets and other commodities like gold and silver, this is your best bet on the royalties front. With that said, Star Royalties has been exploring the possibility of spinning out Green Star, which is the subsidiary that has control of the carbon offset royalty portfolio, so we'll see if that happens or not. But as far as partnerships go, STAR is doing quite nicely. They partnered with A New Climate, which is the largest carbon project developer in North America. So they have access to a variety of potential projects to garner royalties from. And Agnico Eagle as well, a large gold producer who owns 35% of Green Star. So they are co-investing along with Green Star in these carbon projects. Moving on, the last company to look at on the royalties front is DevStream, ticker DESG. Market cap is currently sitting at 35 million Canadian. And this company differs from the other options so far because they're focused purely on royalties related to technology-based projects. You know, LED light bulb retrofitting, uh, plugging abandoned orphaned oil and gas wells, which leak methane, and so on. Many of these projects are being sourced through their partnership with United Cities North America, which is a partner of the United Nations. Something else to note about the company is the data platform that they're developing on the blockchain, leading to increased visibility into the specifications of their carbon offsets. And this is in cooperation with DevStream's largest shareholder, Debio. So there are several notable partnerships there. Moving on to the last type of business model that we can choose from, this would be the carbon project developers. These companies are the ones that actually design and build carbon projects that operate in the voluntary carbon markets. You know, whether that be Red Plus or forestry projects, cook stoves, plugging oil and gas wells, carbon capture, and the list goes on. But speaking of carbon capture, the first and largest developer to look out for is Acre Carbon Capture, ticker ACC. The company currently trades at a market cap of around 961 million USD. This is by far the largest company that we're going to mention in this video. The company has carbon capture projects across Europe, in the UK, Norway, Denmark, and more. You know, along with exploring more opportunities for projects in North America and the Middle East. 
you know, the company is seeing some pretty significant revenue growth, although they're not generating net income yet. But keep in mind, these numbers are in Norwegian Krones. Yeah, but with that said, Acre is definitely a safer option than most mentioned in this video. The next carbon offset developer to mention is ClimateX, ticker KLX. They have a relatively diversified portfolio operating in five countries, Sierra Leone, Suriname, Mexico, Guyana, and Pakistan. Most of their projects being nature-based, you know, reforestation, mangrove restoration, agroforestry, and so on. They have several projects nearing in on the completion of the final project design documentation. The company will be seeing the sale of offsets pretty shortly here. They just signed a binding pre-purchase agreement with a Fortune 100 company on the first 5,000 hectares from their rewilding project in Sierra Leone. So ClimateX is nearing offset production at this point. Next up is Big Tree Carbon, ticker BIGT. Market cap is around 6 million Canadian. They have several forestry projects that they're developing and a few gold exploration projects as well, which they have stated they would sell to focus on carbon instead if they deemed it beneficial. Now this would be an interesting company to watch for anyone that's looking into Star Royalties because this Lac Sewell Reserve project was partially funded by Star Royalties. So now Star has a 16% gross revenue royalty there. Moving on, we have the developer DGB Group, ticker DGB in Amsterdam. 5 million market cap, priced in euros. The company is focused on developing reforestation, afforestation, and cookstow projects in Kenya, Cameroon, and Uganda. DGB has seven large-scale projects under development in total, and they are continuing to explore more opportunities to expand. Currently, there are two projects undergoing validation with Vera, and they're also distributing cook stoves right now in Kenya. The last company in the video is called Zephyro Methane. This one's not public quite yet, but they're looking to list pretty soon on the Canadian Stock Exchange. The company's focus exclusively on the development of projects plugging orphaned oil and gas wells in North America. And I am assuming that they're going to start ramping up now that the American Carbon Registry has approved the methodology for the plugging of these wells. So now there's a standard to follow and start generating some offsets with over time. A particular trend that we've seen in the voluntary carbon markets has been the interest in blue carbon. Specifically, carbon offsets generated from coastal or wetland-based ecosystems, like mangroves, as we've mentioned earlier. If you'd like to learn more about blue carbon and more details about the options we have to invest in it, then I'll link that video in the description below.